Cam here from Xana Support, and today we're going to be going over how to connect Xana and Bubble together. We're going to be looking at the Bubble API connector. We're going to be taking a look at the community-made plugin by Eli Beachy, and we'll be taking a look at unauthenticated, authenticated gets and post calls. So this is how you connect Xana and Bubble together. With connecting Xano and Bubble, we're going to be focusing primarily on our products, where we're going to be querying all of our products and creating a product, as well as our user table, where this user is going to be making authenticated requests. Inside Xano, we can navigate to our API groups, and under default, we're going to be focusing on the auth login endpoint. Under products, we'll be using the query all product records, or just the slash products, and then our post products, where you can see this is an authenticated request. Over within Bubble, we're going to be focusing on just the user data type. You may or may not have additional data types that you use in combination with Bubble and Xano together. But in this particular example, we're just focusing on the user. The user is going to have an authorization token column added of type text. We're going to have to authenticate the user in Bubble and authenticate the user in Xano. And then, of course, we need to store that token to the user in Bubble. We're extending the user data table in this case and not replacing it. It's because Bubble just has awesome native built-in functionality for the user. So we're going to be using both. Now let's go ahead and hop on over to our Bubble plugin section. Over in our plugins, we're going to be installing and using the Bubble API connector. If you don't have it, you can add it in the top right and it should appear at the very top. You'll click install and you should then see this. Now it might be a little bit more empty. We've already preemptively set up some of these groupings. And these groupings are very similar to the groupings inside Xano. We'll go ahead and establish a group called Xano Auth. It'll be none or self-handled authentication. We'll be managing. Now, inside this group, we have an API endpoint, or I should say we have a call that we are making. This is our name of login. We're using it as an action, and it will be the method of post. The endpoint URL can be grabbed from Xano. We can go to our default endpoint, our default group, and click on the login endpoint. And we'll click copy endpoint URL. We'll just paste that value in this URL input box. After that, we do have our body that we will need to go ahead and configure. This body, it accepts JSON, and that's perfect for us because we're going to go ahead and head to our run and debug and just copy and paste these values in a run and debug over into our body. We do need to ensure that our email and password value are dynamic. So we will add those left and right arrows. And then down here, we'll go ahead and actually enter those values. When the values are entered, we can reinitialize or initialize the call, and we should get a response. This is our response. It is the auth token, and this is the value of the auth token. Now, when we are dealing with Bubble's API connector, and we're dealing with sensitive information, we are going to want to, uh, to remove it after we've successfully initialized this call. This is just a security best practice. We don't want anybody to see this data as it may be loaded onto the page and seen or queried from the console. After we've set up the login, we can proceed with the products. We've already created this group. We'll go ahead and collapse the login and the auth group, and we'll open up our products. It's largely the same. The authentication, at the least, is none or self-handled, and Within here, the two calls that we have, we have our get products, which is a get, and we're using it as an action. This URL can be grabbed in the same way. So we'll go ahead and head back to Xano. We'll go to our products group and we'll go to our query products. We'll copy that endpoint URL. You can see it's just real simple anyway. We're just querying our products. We'll head over to Bubble again and paste that within the URL input box. We'll reinitialize the call and we get all of our data back. Perfect. Now, we'll collapse this and move on to the authenticated request. We're calling it create products, and again, we're using it as an action. So we'll click a button or reload a page or something of that sort, and we have our method of post. Now, the URL, again, grabbed in the exact same manner. We'll navigate back to our products, the post, and copy that endpoint URL, and we'll paste it in. The authorization in this case, we are going to add a header. So we'll click this add header button, and for our key, we'll add authorization. For our value, we'll add bearer, and we can get this token back in our Xano auth group. We'll open up or expand our login, and we'll manually enter our API response where we'll be able to grab this value. So copy, and then 
head back down to our authorization header. And what we're going to do is we're going to paste that value. This is typically how you would set up your requests, especially if it's the first time and you need to initialize it through bubble. Now the body, very similar. We go to the run and debug, we grab that, we copy it and we bring it back into bubble and we paste it. We again need to make those values dynamic. And you can see here, we have done just that. Our title will say is testing and our price will set at 100. So once we have our authorization header filled out and the dynamic content filled out here, we'll click reinitialize call. You can see now we have our data. What happens if we go ahead and remove this value? So let's say there is not a token and we are in, uh, reinitialize it. You can see Xano is throwing an error. It's saying we're not authorized. So we can bring that back and initialize it one more time. And now we're ready to actually hook it up in our workflows. But only after, of course, we make sure that we remove the sensitive information, that is our bearer token and the parameters within the body. You don't need to reinitialize it. This is just so, of course, for best security practices that this information isn't visible if someone is actively looking for it. After we've successfully set up our endpoints and we've initialized them and removed all of the sensitive information, we can navigate to the design panel and see how we actually set everything up to work with those endpoints we just created. In the top left-hand corner, we have our login section. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have the ability to add an item or make a request to that post call that requires um, authentication. And on the right-hand side, we have a repeating group, and this is just getting all of our data from that query all records. Now, let's go ahead and preview this real quick just to demonstrate the behavior. I'm not logged in at the moment, but I'll go ahead and add an item. This will be our test item, and our price will be 100. We'll go ahead and click add, and it looks like I'm not authorized. So this did not add, and I'm told that I'm not authorized. I need to log in. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and enter in our password 123 and then click login. And now we should be able to go ahead and add this item. Now on page reload, I have a query all data. If I go ahead and scroll down, you can see we do have that test item we just added, as well as of course, a couple other items that we added while we were initializing the call the first time. Now, it's important to note here that you don't have to set it up like this. This is just an example of using page reloads to query data, as well as, you know, button clicks to do certain things. Now, traditionally, you will have button clicks to add items or button clicks to log in. But in terms of getting the data, how do we actually do that in this case? And so let's dissect this workflow. Or I should say these workflows. We have our uh, workflow tab. Let's focus from left to right and go in this order. So when the page is loaded, what we're going to do is we're going to get our products. This is an action. So all I had to do was search the name that I called it and get products pops up when I type in get products. After that, what I want to do is I want to display a list of data in my repeating group. The repeating group needs a certain data type, and that data type is going to be my get products. I set that by clicking on the repeating group and the type of content I'll find at the very bottom. Under plugin types, I'll be able to see get product, I'll select that. And now in my workflow, I can send the result of step one or the same data type to my repeating group. When I click the button add, we're going to go ahead and create products. And this is how you'll uh, go ahead and uh, set up your authenticated requests as well. You'll have bearer and then your current user's authorization token. I've seen people write it out like this, as well as when you log in or create a user, you save bearer and concatenate that with the authorization token so you never have to write anything and can solely use dynamic blue text. Otherwise, we are going to be passing in as well the title input as well as the price input. It's very straightforward here once you get that set up, and it's a lot similar for the other items too, but this is our login. And this is pretty important because again, we are extending that bubble database. We're going to be creating the user information in both bubble and within Xano. And so this is assuming that your users exist. This is how you would set it up. First and foremost, you are going to log the user in. Logging the user in on bubble side allows us now to use current user and other things within Bubbles Editor. Super advantageous, and I strongly encourage you to leverage that awesome, awesome feature. After that, we are going to log the Xano user in. After the Xano user has been logged in, we're now going to make changes to that user or the current user. The current user 
we're going to be updating their authorization token with the result of step two. After that, we're going to go ahead and just clear any errors or enforce that there are zero errors. Now, again, you don't have to set it up this way, but I am using states on my page that do trigger uh, whether or not to show certain elements based on certain conditions. The button log out here, this is also an important thing to note. We're going to clear the current user's authorization token. They don't need it, and we want to ensure that nobody else can get it either, whether that's a developer on your account or, or anything other we don't want it. So we delete it. Then we log the user out for step two. Last but not least, we're going to go ahead and track our errors. And so this is the, if an element has an error running a workflow, I've selected the element my button adds. So if when I click this and I get an error, I'm going to go ahead and display a message. And in this case, I set my state, my auth error, it's a Boolean value or yes, no. And I say yes. Over in the design tab, I go ahead and I have this hidden group here with just the conditional that if there's an error, go ahead and show. So we have the ability to log in with our email address and our password and click login. And then we have the ability to create items and also the ability to query items. So you can see unauthenticated calls and authenticated calls, gets and posts through this method using the Bubble API connector. Bubble's API connector is absolutely awesome and it lets you connect with Xano really easily. However, sometimes there is a downside where Bubble handshakes or proxies every request that comes through and it may add unnecessary latency to your application. So a community member by the name of Eli Beachy has created a plugin that we fully support and we're going to go ahead and show you how you can go ahead and bypass the proxy and maybe save a couple workflow units. To get started, we're going to go ahead and navigate to our add plugins within the plugin section of Bubble, and we'll search for Xano. We'll see Xano at the top by Eli, and we'll click install. Once you've selected the Xano connector plugin on the panel on the right hand side, you'll see some information that I have. I have my API group URL headers in my group URL. This is traditionally your default URL, and it allows us to make authenticated requests or at least maintain the user um, without having to have an element on each page. The way that we get this is we navigate to our default group and we grab the base URL. Going back inside, we're going to go ahead and paste these values within the group URL, input boxes, and we're good to go here. Now, there's one last thing that we need to do. And what you'll hear um, it, most people in the community say is we need virtual data types to use this plugin. You can think of it as a model or a snapshot, but ultimately what we need is a way to tell Bubble what kind of data we're going to be using and how we expect that response. So you are going to have to create these requests in Bubble's API connector anyway. It doesn't mean you have to fully set it up in the same fashion, that is with an endpoint and with parameters. You could very well just take the response and enter it as a manually entered response. Now, your API might need a little bit more configuration here. So let's go ahead and focus on an endpoint that returns a little bit more data. I'll go ahead and head to my get products and I'll manually enter my API response. And what I'll do is I'll click save. Bubble gives us the ability to control the data that is returned back and the data type or uh, kind of data that it is. So here we have our ID and we want to make sure that it is a number. You might see an error within the plugin that says it received a string and expected a number or something similar. This is where you go to go ahead and fix that issue. You click manually into response and then change the type. So once that's the case and it's been set, you'll click save. And now we can go ahead and see how we set the elements in the design tab. After you've set up the virtual data types, you can navigate back to your design tab. And in this case, our design tab is virtually identical to what we had previously, except this time we're leveraging the plugin and we have some elements here, Xano query A and Xano action A to help facilitate that. Now, we have also refactored some of the workflows, and so let's take a look at how we do this. To demonstrate, let's go ahead and preview this page. And what we have here, we'll demonstrate just an add item. So unauthorized, that response was very quick. And then we can see as we refresh, the data is near instant. We can log in so that we're allowed to go ahead and create an item here. And so we'll say, create a new item, version two, and the price will be one. We'll go ahead and click add. and. The cool part about this plugin is we saw no loading bars or anything of the sort, but you can see that we were able to load that data back into this repeating group. Very cool. No page refreshes or nothing. And you could accomplish something similar with 
the uh, Xeno Bubble API connector using it as a data instead of as an action, but this is a much less hacky way of accomplishing. And honestly, I think it does a little bit better. Now, how do we actually get this set up? So if we navigate back here into Bubble, we're going to go ahead and start by just dissecting what's on the page. We have a repeating group and we have Xeno Query A. Xeno Query A is going to allow us to get the data to use in a repeating group. You can see the data type. This is our virtual data type. And this is the snapshot that Bubble takes of that API call or that API request. And we're letting this plugin know that's the information we're using. The endpoint is the name of the endpoint. So in this case, slash products, we are loading the data. So we're saying, yep, you can go ahead and load it, make an API request. And then auto refresh data lets us navigate away from this page and come back and the page will automatically refresh. That is sort of like when you're idle on the page. Now, we lastly have our group URL and this group URL is grabbed exactly from where we had grabbed it last time, except this is different. This is for our products. Because our products exist in a different group URL than what we specified in the plugin setup, we need to go ahead and grab the group URL and then put it within the actual query within the group URL input. After we do that, we can go ahead and just reload the page and we'll have data. So as long as it's an unauthenticated request and of course your user is not signed in. Now, Lastly, we have our action. This is how we're going to be making post requests and it's an action. So you will use it within your workflows. Very similar though, we are going to be selecting a data type and we've said we're going to be using the create product data type. In our group URL here, this is the exact same. Now, Eli Beachy does go into depth in his tutorial on how to use this. And um, you don't necessarily need different data types if you're using data types that are similar. Now, in this case, the data types are a list versus a single, so they are dissimilar. But if you are returning an object that exists at a different endpoint that you otherwise normally would, you don't have to create two API responses for that. You can just create one since they're returning the same information, and you would tell this plugin to use that data type. In this case, we're using the create product, the group URL, and then everything's associated with the button click. What we're doing when our button add is clicked, we're using or triggering the Xano action element. The method, we do get to select it from here. So we're selecting post. We have the endpoints or the endpoint name slash products, and then our custom parameters. You can see that we set them up a little bit differently here and it offers more complex objects. You could also just create simple key value pairs down here. Otherwise, you have the ability to create nested JSON objects and more and send them directly from the workflow. Now, with that, you have uh, once we actually do trigger it, we are going to refresh that data. So near instantly it triggers and it refreshes and that's why we can see it in the repeating group. Now, when we log the user in, cool thing to note is we don't necessarily need to actually have an additional column on the user in this case. We can log the user in, the bubble user with the email and the password, as well as log in the user with, uh, or the Xano user with the same email and password. And what we have then the ability to do is sort of just forget it stores. <laughs> the cool part is, is that if you've used this plugin before, there used to be an element that you had to have on every page. We don't need that anymore. In fact, the group headers allow us to sort of like authenticate or stay authenticated uh, without needing that element. So once we have that, uh, the user can, of course, log out if they want to. Logging the user out, all we have to do is log the bubble user out and then log the Xano user out. And another way or the same way to capture elements or errors within workflows, we just have when this button add um, has an error running and it works the same way as we saw. So largely a very similar process, but there is a, definitely an upper hand that the plugin offers versus the conventional bubble API connection route. Now, ultimately, you have the ability to connect Bubble and Xano together, as well as see a demonstration of how you actually get that to work within an application, whether that's through your traditional API or whether that's through using virtual data types and ELA Beachy's plugin. Either way, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. You can also reach out to us through the support chat within your Xano instance, or you can leave any questions, comments, or concerns you'd like within the Xano community. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.